Hello, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, can you hear me, guys? Yes, good morning. Okay, great. So uh, today is a uh, uh, revision session two, uh, which is the last session. So you, uh, I will go through the rest of the stuff. And then uh, you may have some questions uh, when you prepare for the exam. Okay. So today, let me write down. What we are going to talk about today. So uh, in my plan, I will talk a little bit about uh, 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 Cognito. Now, was second. Uh, oh, let me do a recording. Give me a minute. Huh? Okay, where is this guy? Okay. Oh, I think it's recording already. Yeah. So currently I'm in the classroom, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. So give you a sense of a physical <laughs> classroom, right? Hey, what is this? Hello? All right, so we are going to talk about what we are going to talk about today. This guy, yeah, cognito. And then we second, we will talk about uh, microservice. Uh, microservice. So basically, microservice itself is a service, right? It's just uh, you have different ways to to design, to to implement, uh, implement. Uh, your web services, right, or RESTful services. So there are many ways to do it, uh, or different approaches, uh, many, many different ways to do it. Yeah, many different ways to do this, many different ways to do it. They, uh, a lot of developers in the industry, when they work on the project, they, and then they, they try to improve, uh, find out what is a, so-called best way to design and implement uh, RESTful services. And then, so then they come out some of the, something called uh, uh, best practice, right? Best practice. And of course, this practice is, is kind of a proven approach. Right, proven way, proven, proven. You try design this way, implement this way, and then we see how it works, uh, how it performs, uh, how it behaves, our application, uh, especially uh, you will talk about uh, the application we are building uh, is built on the internet, built in the cloud, right? Uh, so last time we talked about is basically anything could happen uh, in the cloud. So the jungle, uh, jungle things. So, so when we talk about best practice, uh, right? Uh, is this is a context? Our application could behave in orderly manner, whether it is in breeze, right, or it's a storm, right? Because if we don't have this environment, harsh environment which could happen, we don't know when it would happen, right? Uh, you don't have any best practice, every practice K, right? Yeah, uh, so that's a thing uh, we highlight a little bit last session. Then thirdly, today we'll uh, revise a little bit about a cross, right? Which is cross origin uh, resource sharing. Yeah, cross-origin resource sharing. Yeah, 
cost. So at the time we build your web service, right? Uh, you know, Node.js, you say, oh, this service uh, enable cross, right? Uh, right. So again, okay, we we'll take a look uh, what is the best practice uh, to enable cross. Uh, so and then in the assignment tool, uh, when we talk, when we use these building blocks called Web API Gateway, right? Uh, we also can uh, configure this cross enable. Uh, so we have uh, hands-on experience. So based on this, uh, then we take a look what is going on. Can we learn more about it, right? Uh, so these are the three things. Uh, we will go through with you. Yep. So at this stage, any questions uh, you want to highlight? Uh, so you, you let me know the questions. So I may not answer you now. So maybe at the time we go through this, uh, I can answer your question. Or at the end of this, uh, we have this Q and A. All right. Well, it sounds good, guys. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. So let's move to this. So this this sequence uh, may not be the same sequence as what appear in the slides. All right. So. Uh, Let's move on uh, to the cognito. Okay, so let me revise this topic, right? So in the exam, it's really up to you how you, you can define this term, uh, web service, RESTful service, or even cloud service uh, based on your understanding, your own words. Right? So the idea is when we build our back end, we will build uh, services, right? Uh, this is service one, this is service two, this is service three, this is service four, right? So this service, <clears throat> we can build on our own, right? So in your assignment, you build the slash users, uh, document, uh, submission, registration, and so on and so forth. Uh, you may use other services, services, you tested by others. They put it. The, they put it in the cloud or put it somewhere, right? So, in our assignment, you use this cloudinary service to put the objects into it, and then you go to AWS Cloud. You say, "I want to have EC2. I want to have a Lambda." Mm, DynamoDB, I know have RDS. So all of these are services, all right? So, and then work together, right? Work together, yeah, work together. So now, before we move to Cognito, I want you to recall in your assignment one, in your assignment two, you have build a service for authentication and authorization, right? Authentication service. Yeah, so, uh, uh, Yonria, what is 3A in the context of uh, application, especially application security and kind of things? What are the 3A? Uh, authentication, authorization, and accounting, and, accounting, yes. right? So because authentication, you need to understand who this guy is. Are they uh, based on this? Are they uh, what resource they can access? How they can access the resource? So come to authorization, and we need to do the locking, uh, our so called accounting. Oh, this guy access this service not successful at this timestamp from this particular IP address. Uh, so for auditing, for to meet the re regulatory requirements, compliance requirement, and so on and so forth. 
right? So, because we are building service, so we say, oh, let me build a service for authentication, let me build a service for authorization, and some service for logging, right? It's a good idea to put authentication and authorization in one single service, or if you have choice, I say I put uh, authentication in one service, authorization in another service, so this is choice B. So which one you prefer? Choice A, one service implement authentication and authorization. Choice B, one, one, one service use authentication, another service using authorization. Which one you choose? Which one you, either way can do, right? Uh, so which one you, you think is better? Your Ray? Um, I, I personally prefer putting both in one. Okay. Anyone prefer to separate these two? Yeah, we have choices, right? Yeah, it's not really a uh, right or wrong answer. It's just what, what is the best practice. Uh, and if you say choice A is best practice, uh, there must be a reason, right? Uh, if you say choice B, uh, I separate authentication authorization service into two instead of one, hey, you think this is best practice. Uh, they, uh, there is a reason behind it, right? Okay. So there's a question I think I need to, of course this will not be tested, but it's, it's so important to understand. Right? So you authentication, the question is, are you going to, Put this authentication plus authorization service together, right? Or you want to decouple, decouple, decouple this authentication service and uh, authorization service, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a question we put it here. Yeah. All right. So in our assignment, we have, let's say, authentication service. We have used a slash user or you. At that time, is a slash login, is it? Is it? Is a slash login, right? In your case, right? Authentication, right? Yes. Slash so looking at in the morning, there's one student asked me this question. Uh, okay. So logging, right? So this is a RESTful service. This is a web API. Uh, okay. So when we call the service, use HTTP POST, and then the path is slash login. So inside the body, we put a, a username and password over there in the body. So upon this receiving this request, this, this web service will do the authentication, right? So is this username uh, blah, blah, correct? And then compare the, the hash password, uh, so on and so forth. Right, and then generate a token we call GW token if the verification authentication is successful. Uh, Yonria, in this sample, uh, right over here, so the question they asked me in the morning, uh, they say, Where we where this code will be tested? Where we test this code? Yonri, can you help me to answer this question based on your understanding, your revision? Uh, 
understanding, no harm, right? So that's a thing, no problem, right? Right? You ready? Yeah, I can understand. Yeah, so you, 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 the students, I, I think it's a valid reason. Do I have to uh, remember this code or write this code? Yeah, so we say understand this code. Okay, so that's a, that's a thing, right? So do I have to write this code? No. In the exam, are you expected to write code? Um, I remember writing code. Yeah, so for the two parts, for cloud computing part, no need to write code. For secure coding, uh, you need to know how to write code using regular expression for input validation at the server side, right? Regular expression. Uh, you also need to know how to mitigate secret injection. So for example, they give a segment of code and then uh, you, 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 you will know by the uh, read the code, code review, this is uh, vulnerable to secret injection. They are not using question mark, question mark properly, right? Uh, query, uh, parameterized query. Yeah, so these are the things we highlight to you uh, uh, last session. And then in the revisions, revision resources we provided for secure coding, there is a link to the MST revision, right? So over there, you can get a, a sense uh, if you write code, what are you expected to write? Because this is secure coding. So you make the code secure. Of course, you must know how to do the input validation, right? Yeah. Uh, someone say input validation can solve 80% of the vulnerabilities in the code, right? So uh, we don't know whether 80% or 70% is correct, but it's critical, it's important. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's why probably you will see, oh, if Ms. G is uh, uh, setting the question properly, so probably this could be the one, right? And then secret rejection, uh, you guys know, right? So refer to your assignment, uh, what you have done over there, uh, for this kind of coding, yeah. So of course, when you uh, revise this and then you see this authentication service, right, verify the username, password, compared to the one in the database, uh, whether it's a SQL database or DynamoDB database, uh, then if it's successful, they generate a token with a secret, yeah. Secret. Mm. All right, and return the user. Say, oh, lock authentication is successful. Locking is successful, uh, and then the token will be put in the in the body. All right. Okay. So, Yonri, are you okay? Clear. Yes. I'll clear a little bit. I say, hey, Mr. Chi, why you talk about this? Uh, this is not tested. Uh, all right. <laughs> Collect, 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 collect. Ah. So let me back to the revision slides. So you have built this authentication service yourself. You have a data store where the user identity information is stored. So you create the web API for service slash login for authentication purpose. You are doing the uh, uh, good job. You testing, you testing, testing, low testing, secure testing, uh, whatever pen testing. All right, you could be improving, 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 improving. Right. And what happened if your authentication service uh, slash login has been hacked? What happened? Yeah. So this question is not clear. So if this is hacked, right? Compared to other services, this login service, this login service, once this guy has been hacked, right, the rest of the service also will be compromised because other service were based on the token given by this guy and then to do proper authorization. 
inside the token or who is the user, what is the role of the user, and then they will decide uh, whether the or send the user can access this particular service, particular resource, and in what way, how they will be able to do it. So once this authentication service is compromised, we have other services, right? Really depends on these services for authentication, right? So our 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 application will be compromised, right? So of course, I say, oh, I, I know. So in this case, our team put more efforts continuously testing, design, improving, deploying these important services. Probably I spend less time on other services, right? Yeah, this is a way we can do it, right? What is a better approach to do this? Who is the assistant class driver for this class? Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> you, you, really, you take two rows, right? Is it? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, uh, assistant, uh, assistant class rep, can you answer this question? So in this case, we know this login service, authentication service over here is so critical, right? Once this uh, has been compromised, other service who depends on this service, right, will be compromised as well. In, in the end, our application will be compromised. So one approach is to, Keeping, design, testing, deploy, testing, right? Continues to do it. What is another way to do it? Alternatively, what we can do? Assistant class, class rep? Yuri, I, I haven't called the name. Uh. Who, who, who is the assistant class rep? Um, her name is Amanda. Samanda, right? Amanda, uh, Amanda. Amanda. Amanda, are you there? Amanda? Yeah, Amanda. Yeah, hi, good morning. Wake up call. Yeah, so our team, uh, who is take care of the authentication service, understand, realize the importance in, in terms of security of this login or authentication service. So our team is keeping design, continuously design, implementing, testing, deploying, and then design, testing, deploying, continuously improve this particular web service. So one of the team is work on this, uh, right? So alternatively, what else we can do to address this real problem we are facing to make sure our authentication service is really very much robust and secure, right? Use AWS Cognito. Huh? Use AWS Cognito. Yes, use AWS Cognito. So you don't build yourself, okay? You use Cognito. Why you use Cognito? Because that means you don't build this service, this wheels yourself, right? Okay, the second way, huh? use a service provided by someone else. They have a team of experts, experts in the team. They have done a great job and put it as a web service API or cloud service uh, for you to call, for you to use. And this is a uh, building blocks you can plug into application. Use another service, right? So for example, uh, in AWS, you have a Cognito service. If your now I move to Cognito already. Yes, yes, use these uh, services. So of course for Amazon, uh, for Amazon, they have this Cognito. You can 
think of. So in our class, I have, we have a uh, couple of groups uh, try this cognito, and uh, uh, I think not really completed, but it's a good try, all right? Uh, and it's like a partially kind of e experimented, right? Partially implemented. That's good enough, uh, good enough. So we are moving towards this direction, right? Authentication. So this guy also provide authorization. So looks like they have these two things over there, authenticate user, a grant user access, right? So this part is authorization, right? So, so in this case, you don't have to create, uh, so your table, user table, all right? Currently you put in your RDS database, uh, more or less, you don't have to do that already because this service already got a data store. We don't care how they store whatever since because we are using this service. We just interact with this service for sign up, sign in, and so on and so forth. All right. And then you say, oh, authentication, I need to do multi factor authentication, MFA, right? Yeah. So, in the previous approach, if you design slash lucky authenticator over here, you're, you're there, and then you want to enhance the security and then you want to uh, implement multi factor authentication to further enhance the security. So your team has to continue to work on it. But if you are using the service, for example, Cognito for authenticate user, it's just a click, right? It just uh, change a little bit of the code. Uh, make use of the MFA uh, features provided by this authentication service, in this case called Cognito. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So in certain application, right, uh, when the user come to you, uh, you don't, they say, I don't want to sign up uh, because I want to use the application, but I don't want to sign up. Why? Because I already signed up in Facebook. I, I want to sign up in this um, uh, GitHub, all right? So, but they still want to use your application, right? So how are you going to authenticate the user? In this case, Yonri, this question is for you. Uh, the sign in or sign up with uh, social media sign in, right? Right? Yes. Right? Social media sign, sign, sign in. Yeah, social media sign. In. So in this case, social media. So your social media need to talk to company dog. Right after the social media do the authentication, so the authorization part still need to be done by your cognito. You talk to cognito how to do authorization, even though in this case authentication is is like a, a, a they call federated authentication, but the authorization still need to be done. You set the rules, what resource they can access, how they can access, and so on and so forth. Authorization is still there, right? So at this stage, uh, you know, I think we answered the question. It's a good idea to decouple authentication and authorization. Because you, once decouple, once separate into two services, you can use different ways of authenticate the user, right? And then you do the authorization, right? Authenticate it using Cognito, uh, using Facebook, all right, so you have different ways of authenticate. Since you decouple the authentication authorization, so regardless of what, how you authenticate, different ways authenticate uh, from this one, two, three, four, right? They come to the authorization, uh, another service, for example, to do this. So it's good to decouple authentication with, uh, from authorization. So Yonri, uh, you got the picture? Um, I still don't get the security benefits of decoupling. It is the uh, because is if you implement this put in this in the one service, right? You may have difficulty to switch to 
other authentication service because you, these two is put together. You, it's very difficult for you to change, right? So if you decouple to two service, authentication service and after authentication service, they work together with authorization service. In this case, if, if you do this approach, then you may have different ways of authentication, right? Whether by Facebook, by GitHub, uh, or by authentic, authenticate uh, or cognito, right? So that's the couple authentication service uh, with authorization service. So yeah, you already got it? Uh, so the different authentication methods, will it produce different types of tokens? Yeah, they provide different types of tokens. So they, you know, so you just come there after that, you just configure the authorization part, right? Uh, so based on this token, and then uh, what are the re resources uh, you you are going to 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 get and so on and so forth. So you let this guy to decide, right? So decouple, decouple. Uh, instead of putting these two together uh, when we implement ourselves, right? Uh, for example, uh, decouple. Yeah, so it's kind of better approach into two services, right? Okay, so um, mm, so in other module, I think you have used some of the uh, authentication service, uh, which is not Amazon Cognito, is called Firebase. There's something, some authentication service come from uh fire 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 base right is called firebase from google they also provide uh this authentication service for us right so okay so i think is uh i will not dive too too deep to this part uh so the the uh uh so this is the only thing i want to highlight uh talk talk, talk about authentication service whether you want to use the service provided by someone else in the cloud, or uh, you have to implement this authentication service ourselves as what we have done in the assignment, right? For learning purpose, uh, that's a, uh, this, uh, no harm. Uh, we try to do this ourselves. Uh, then you have implement your slash login yourself. So when you come to this, uh, using service or syncing service provided by someone else. So you you will be able to use use it and you will be able to appreciate, wow, this guy, not bad, not bad, right? So you will appreciate the service you are using as a building blocks in your application. Uh, and then you really can uh, take a look at your application. Uh, this part has really have been uh, properly hardened right secure right so let uh, so that's all for the first uh, part for today okay hmm. okay now i'm going to move to the second part for today is called microservice right so uh, just now in the pictures uh, you sh you see many many services you have to build right and then uh, one way is to build a service which is very powerful. They, this particular service can do a lot of things, right? Uh, alternatively, you design a small, small uh, service or they call macro. Uh, that means only perform single responsibility of duty. And then uh, many, many macro service you build and work together in the back end to handle the workload, right? So. Uh, we say this is a best practice. Okay. So let's move on to this uh, second part, microservice. Where is it? Yeah, so micro. Yeah, so it's just a service, RESTful service or cloud service, whatever things is just a good practice and it's proven good practice in the industry. Uh, so, uh, so the kind of things is web API, but it's a kind of a single res responsibility of single response, single, res du single responsibility of duty, right? So instead of put a, 
uh, and then each service can be involved very, very fast, can be handled by the different teams, right? And then can, really, really, we'll be able to continuously improve and developing and so on and so forth, right? Uh, so that's a thing. <clears throat> so uh, this is an example, a RESTful service, a web service. Now we have a single responsibility of duty instead of this service making it so powerful heavy weight to do a lot of a lot of things right so we say micro okay you do a single things and do it well right so other service also follow the same approach i do this well right so your rate again come to the picture uh, so you have a choice to say i do authentication i can do authorization right together Right, this one approach. Uh, if you look at the uh, single responsibility duty, follow the good practice of uh, industry called microservice. So I may have one web API to authentication and another web API uh, rest for service or microservice for authorization. And another service to do the locking, locking, locking for content purpose. So we decouple them. Right, uh, provide the flexibility. You change the authentication, does not change the authorization. When you change the authorization, you don't affect the authentication because this belongs to different microservices, different scope. You ready? You have a better picture now. Yeah, a bit unclear. Yeah, okay. You later you let me know what is unclear. Yeah. So the interesting part, if this guy is do authentication, so you have a logic over there and you have a data store, right? So important part is you have a data store, you have RDS table, or you may have DynamoDB table called users, right? Users. Oh, yeah, what does that mean? Uh? This is a so called. This is the responsibility of duty performed by this slash login authentication service. And you see within the so-called, only this web service, this slash login, we call microservice, you will follow this practice, can access, can take care of the data store. Whether the user tables, right? Whether the user tables is RDS or the table you put in DynamoDB. The key things is only this service can access this data store, right? So it sounds like diff slightly different from what we have practiced in our assignment one, assignment two. We have a MySQL database. Uh, we have many services all come together to this particular data store, right? It's not a good practice. In microservice, only this guy. Okay, let me use this picture to highlight to you. Where is this picture? Where is this picture? Oh, this is a picture. All right. So this is a table, DynamoDB table, our data store, which is for this microservice B. And then for microservice A, they have their own data store over there, maybe another database or another DynamoDB table or other data store somewhere, right? It's like this. However, in order for this microservice A to perform his single responsibility of duty, they need to access his own data store as well as need to access the data store which belongs to microservice B. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Get the data, ding dong, ding dong, get the data. I put the data together, maybe do some proper sanitization, and put in the JSON serialization in JSON format, and then put in a HTTP payload, ding dong, response back sent to the client who call our web API. 
what is the problem of this approach? Look at this red dashed line. Monica? Monica, are you there? I'm offline, I think. Yuri, am I offline? No. Okay, hear me. Monica is not here, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what? Nothing wrong because over here you see in our web API design, many, many different web API RESTful service is sharing single database, right? The best practice is you have different databases which belong to individual web API who will take care of this database, right? So what's wrong with this approach? Amanda? Sorry, can you rephrase your question? Yeah, so uh, this is a web service, right? Uh, so uh, no, let's say written in Node.js or Java, it doesn't matter. So upon request, so this guy needs some data from his own database. And then he also needs some data from this DynamoDB. And then, of course, he can write the code with proper credential, assign the role uh, mm -hmm. they can access. And then back the get the data from this table and put together, return the result to the response, right? Okay. So this is the approach, right? So uh, the question here is if this microservice A want to get the data from DynamoDB, instead of accessing it directly to the data store. What else he can do to get the data from this particular DynamoDB table? What else? What other way he can do to get the data from this data store? One way is get the data directly like this, right? Right? Alternatively, in order for microservice A to get the data from DynamoDB, what this service can do? Amanda, is this question clear? Uh, yeah. So how? Uh, tips. Yeah, instead of doing this, what other way we can do for microservice A to get the data from this particular DynamoDB. Not sure. Well, let me show you again. You, you look, uh, can you uh, see the screen? Can you see, right? Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I can see, I see. Uh. Stay here for three seconds. Okay, let's back to this question. One way to get the data from DynamoDB like this, direct access, get the item, and then assuming it has given the role for this uh, process to, to, for this service to access this guy. Alternatively, how this service A can get data from DynamoDB here, alternatively, another way to do it. Amanda, another way. Uh, not sure, right? No. Not sure. Okay, wait. To... This is another way. How this guy can do? Okay. Uh, you can you express in your own way. The microservice will request the other microservice for the data. Yeah, through the API, through the interface. Correct. This is the second way to do it. The first way, uh, Yonrei, Yonrei, Yonrei. Yes. How many pockets uh, do you have? Uh? 
Pockets. <laughs> How many pockets? <laughs> How many pockets <laughs> do you have? You have two? On yeah, two. Two. Okay, let's say you have two. This let's say Yong Ray, you are microservice P. This is your pocket. Right. So I'm working the same team, microservice A. I know in my back end, microservice A, microservice B will work together to perform the workload, process the request, and so on and so forth. So this is Mr. G, we call microservice A. So I this, upon request, I need some data, or I have my own data store, but some data does not belong to me. It's not under my scope of responsibility. It's belong to you, your risk pocket. So because we are working the same company, uh, working the same team, right? Work for the same project, right? So I use the invisible hands, get the item directly from DynamoDB, from Yonri, microservice piece pocket. Yonri, do you know I got this from your pocket? No. You may not know. Do you think it's appropriate to do so? No. Is this a good practice? No. <laughs> yeah, no, right? Sorry, uh, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, your name is very, 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 very clear, right? <laughs> yeah. But when we do, when we build our application, we are doing something like that, right? Yeah, uh, something like that. So they say, oh, best practice is to, your name, oh, can you give me, I know in your pocket, uh, you got a chocolate, right? Can you give me a chocolate, your name, please? I do this. You already say, based on your authentication, right? I know who you are. Uh, authorization process, let me go through. Mm, you cannot eat this chocolate, but you can smell. Then you give me something to smell, right? Chocolate. Ah, this is a proper way to do it. Okay, you already, is that clear? Clear? Yes. Yeah, clear. So that's a, it's a practice when you go to the industry, uh, so uh, we know when we do the same thing, we have many, many ways to do it. Uh, sometimes the, the shortcut, the, uh, or we get used to do it every day. Because you really, you know, every time I, I, I do just get things from your pocket, you may not be aware. And one day you see this data has been changed, right? Uh, you have login, whatever things at this stage, of, of, of course. Uh, but you are the first one to be blamed. So how, how, how come, uh, uh, by right, you have 20 chocolates? How come it become 10, right? I say, you really say, I don't know, leh, right? If you have login at the API level, you really don't know. I, I come to your pocket, right? Yeah, so this is a better way to do it. Uh, we are not saying this is wrong, but we know this approach is not the only one approach. It not, may not be the best approach, right? So we need to look at the way we look doing things. Uh, it works, right? And it's a shortcut, right? right? And then we look at, is there any room for us to improve, which seems to working, seems to be fine, right? So that's the thing, okay? So that's a key message for microservice. So end of the day, how your application looks like uh, is something. You have microservice A, microservice B, all of microservices you are building yourself. So probably you design this database one, database data store two, database three, four, database six, right? If your user data is hacked, right? Yeah. If Oh, sorry, let's put it in this way. You have other data has been, database has been hacked, right? Uh, but you put a lot of efforts to protect the user data over here, right? So this guy may not be compromised, right? May not be compromised. If you allow this guy directly to come here to your user table, if this web API has not been properly implemented, secured, the hackers just compromise this and come straight with, put the pocket over here, all right, All right. The data, this important data in this data store, which is contain the user data, will be compromised. End of the day, you know, Lee Silon's data together with other thousands of uh, patients' data will be compromised. Yeah, because you know the user data is here, some transaction data here, log data is here, and blah, blah, data is there. And then you can classify all of the data over here. And then you can, in the first place, you say, 
uh, based on the classification, you see, this particular guy, I uh, need to take care of very much. I put more efforts over there. All right. Uh, you can do it. Yeah. So this is the second topic for today, which is uh, what? Uh, microservice. Okay. Microservice. Storm. Microsoft. Now let's move, move on to the last part uh, uh, called cross, cross origin resource sharing. Cross origin resource sharing. Cross. Yep, cross. You see this picture, right? Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Right? This service got their own database. This service got their own database. This is database, database. Yeah, this is own database. Anyone can improve this picture. This is a client, this is a front end, this is a microservice A, microservice B, microservice C, they, they provide single responsibility of duty over there. Anyone can improve this picture. You see this guy, ding dong, right? <laughs> it's wrong already. <laughs> this microservice go to this database, right? Hey, wrong already. <laughs> this is wrong already. <laughs> This is wrong already, right? <laughs> this messy, messy. <laughs> yeah, this guy put a pocket, Mr. G, right? invisible hands, get the chocolate from your race pocket. <laughs> All right, it's wrong, it's wrong, right? Right? Mm. Okay. Another thing we can improve over here is to put the API gateway in front of the services, right? So this second way, yeah. Okay, let me move to this, uh, what do you call, cross. Cross-origin resource sharing, right? Cross. So in our discussion, in this module, uh, uh, when we talk about resource, basically, Microservice, RESTful service, web service, cloud service is a service. So you want to access the service, your client, your front end, your web, your web application, IoT application, or whatever application. So you want to access this resource, right? So basically resource sharing. So put in this picture. So on the right side of your screen, uh, you notice I have a, got a web service over here. Uh, and then the front end is also over here, the front end, front end. And then different from what you have, your group has done, front end and back end running in the same port number. Okay, so I'm the user. I open my favorite browser, and then I say I want to go to localhost zero index HTML. So this is a home page for the static website, which is host over here, right? Ding dong, all the way, and then the browser kindly render the page and display. So and then I click. Once I click this. Angular JavaScript request a Ajax because I want to see all the products display over here. So this JavaScript, right? Ajax request sent to this web API service, RESTful service, microservice. And then this service is the URL is localhost because we're hosting the same virtual machine, same host. It happened to be the same port number 
right? The path is slash API slash version one progress. So authentication, I use Cognito, set already, and then based on this token, this guy can get the products. Also, I think it's successful. Return the products all the way to the browser, and then browser display it in some of the components uh, uh, over here uh, nicely to the you to the user. All right. Okay, Yonri, is this cross origin resource sharing? <clears throat> Is this cross origin resource sharing? This is a resource, this is a service. Uh, this front end is uh, accessing this service upon uh, user click the product, whatever things. Is this cross origin resource sharing? In this no. area? No, why no? Um, because mm. it has the same domain name, port number, and protocol. Okay, so, so it's no, the same origin. Yeah, same origin. So, yeah, so your answer is 100% correct. Uh, so, no need for me to do revision already. Just highlight over here. For the course, what do you mean by cross origin, right? Yeah, uh, so, same. So, what do you mean by same origin? It's the same thing. What do you mean by same origin? If it's the same, it means Uh, scheme is the same. Scheme, HTTP or HTTPS file, F FTP or email scheme. In this case, we are using HTTPS. So scheme is the same, right? So this guy is HTTPS. When they click the button, request the service, request the resource, this guy, this resource microservice <laughs> is HTTPS as well. And scheme is the same. And domain name is the same. Right? Localhost domain name is the same, right? And phone number is the same. So the phone number is either a one. This guy is a one, right? So this is the same origin. So what do you mean by cross origin? Yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing. Cross origin means if any one of them, any one of them, right, is not the same. That means cross origin already, right? Right, cross origin already. Yeah. So just give an example. This user use this looks like a BlackBerry. Any of you guys heard about BlackBerry or use BlackBerry before? BlackBerry. Blackberry, <laughs> Blackberry, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At that time, only the director in our school can have this Blackberry, right? Uh, I think 20 years ago, right? Or maybe 50 years ago, right? He traveled all the place, <laughs> right? We carry this, right? Yeah, it's a very convenient, <laughs> right? Access email, whatever at that time, right? They got a keyboard as well, right? Small, small, portable. Can put it in his uh, small pocket. One day I tried to access his pocket, but cannot get it, get a call. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So he accessed this website. Uh, let's call it front end, static website, whatever. All right. Services.contos.com. Service. So this is the one. So then after you click here, click there. So this guy need to access this one. Right? This resource, this service. This service is service.contoso.com. A domain name is the same. However, this is cross origin. Why? The scheme is not the same. This HTTPS is HTTP, so cross origin, right? So this is cross origin. Second one, right? Domain name is not the same, right? Third one is same. And then last one, can you look at the last one? Uh, phone number is not the same. This, what is the phone number of this guy? The resource, the service he's accessing, the phone number is either, either. Scheme is the same, HTTP. Domain name is the same, phone number. The service, the, the resource, the phone number is A0, A0. But this guy is what? What is the phone number over here?
Your Ray? Uh, the 80. Yeah, 80. 80. If we don't put the a poor number, that means it's default poor number, as if it's like this. Okay? It's like this. Call an 80. Yeah. It's call an 80. Right. So it's not the same. Therefore, cross or, or orange. So the user over here will not be able, uh, the client over here will not be able to access this data. And then, of course, uh, you, if you use developer tools, uh, you will know this is an error, cross origin error. And then during demo of assignment tool, right? So a couple of groups show me how they enable the cross to solve the problem. So you guys know better uh, about this topic, right? Whether it's traditional App application, web application, or cloud application, because all of them are services. So cross apply, right? So last session, I did ask your guys a question. Uh, this guy accesses, uh, since this service does not enable the cross for this domain name, whatever things over here to access, so you will see the error. But if I do the troubleshooting using, using this uh, Postman, I use Postman send request to this service at this URL. I don't see any error. I see the JSON result. Uh, I, I think we discussed this last session. You're really right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, so basically, uh, the reason is because this course, the, we put the rules over here. Say, when you, when you, when you build your resource, build the service, you say, oh, uh, someone from other original example.com will be able to access my service. They can do put, post delete, uh, and the headers, right? So in the assignment tool, uh, some students show me, group show me, uh, some of the headers need to be enabled. So these are the rules you set with the resources, your services to enable the course. And then in our Node.js code, guys, uh, we just say allow origin. We put a star over there. So your Node.js code, you can fine tuning, make your rules uh, in a more granular level to see exactly what are the origins you allow to access your service. And you can specify the methods. You can specify the headers in the HTTP request come back to you. So these are the rules you can set and bundle Link to the service you are uh, uh, link the, with the service, right? And then you set enable course. Okay. So now, when we using post, let's say it's not enabled, right? This guy is not part of this guy, right? Orange is not here, is not here. All right. So Okay, so let's, let's take away this. Uh, this a lot of oranges and the website. Let's take away this guy. So in this case, this guy cannot access, right? So Postman can do it. So why this guy can access? So last time we give you the, the, re the reason is the cross rules you put together with this is enforced by the browser. Enforced by the browser. Yeah, so how it works. So I, the user access this website over here, I get the result. They click here, click there, and then they will send the request to this service over here, right? Scheme, HTTP, domain name, this, phone number, this. Then the browser realize, hey, you are going to send a request to this resource which is different origin from this website, right? So what the browser is going to do? Browser say, wait, 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 wait for a while. Since it's different origin, let me, the browser say, let me, now you want to 
send a request to this guy, to this service, to this resource with Wito. Before I do this for you, because your JavaScript is running within the browser environment, so the browser knows you are going to do this, right? But the browser will detect this is cross origin. So, Yonre, at this stage where the browser stop this request, Yes. Where, why? Why the browser? How the browser knows they were, they were stop this guy? The rules you set over here is not with the browser. It is linked to your to this particular service somewhere, someplace, right? You host on the EC2. You host this service in the Lambda with, together with API Gateway, DynamoDB, and so on and so forth. So browser has no idea about these rules. Right. So how this browser will be able to decide now is this cross origin and it's not allowed by the back end. So I stop you. I give you the error. So how the browser knows? Uh, is it the options request? Yeah. So the browser don't know actually. The browser only know you your orange is here. Now you click, click, click there, your JavaScript running in my browser environment, try to send an Ajax request to the orange, which is different from yours. So I'm, then the browser say, plus, plus, wait, wait. You may be able to access, you may not be able to access. The browser say, let me check with this resource. So the browser will send option request to this guy, ask this guy, uh, there's a request come from this, Orange, right? Does your website, does this service, does this resource allow this guy to send a request to you? What a request, get a request or put a request. So your backend, your service will response. Tell the browser in the option response, say no, right? Then the browser say no, all right? If the response based on these rules you have set, uh, if this guy say, okay, return to you, then the browser will send another request. We'll send the request to get or put whatever things to the services, right? So there's the, this is how the browser knows whether we'll enable this uh, cross orange resource sharing by checking with the backend services. And backend services, we have got this piece of file linked associated with this service. Of course, this is single file. Uh, we don't want to mix with, uh, we separate it, decoupled from this particular service, right? You design service and I design paper like this. So decouple, why is the beauty of decouple? Uh, these rules can be applied to right, this service, can be applied to other services, right? So decouple, decouple, decouple. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So this is the stuff. Uh, what? Uh, so looks like I have one more topic. So I, I ended this guy already, right? I ended this guy already. Okay. So Q and A. I just put a Q. So I ask you question. Draw a diagram of serverless computing using draw a diagram of serverless.
So this is a kind of like an interesting question. I draw a diagram of server. Hey, server. Oh, we have managed server, EC2 virtual machine. And then we have Linux running, updated, apply patches. We put a Node.js, other runtime environment or library over there. Ah, oh, finally, we put our Node.js zip on zip and then struggle a little bit and it finally works. So we manage this server, right? This is assignment to part one. In assignment to part two, we say we want to use this. We don't want to concern or manage the server. We just put our code in this platform, put in the Lambda, right? That's all, right? So we don't want, we don't need to worry about the server management or we don't want to do the server management. We don't want to kind of uh, monitor the server, all right? And we don't want to do scale up and down, scale in and out of the server, right? So, Draw a diagram. Draw a diagram. Okay, so guys, let me back to this. Service. Oh, uh, what is this? Uh, where is the slides picture will show the service? Okay, yeah. So you don't have to manage, manage the server, underlying uh, virtual machine, whatever since, right? So gateway, Lambda service, uh, Amazon DynamoDB. So these are the kind of, what do you call? The web services, right? Building blocks, right? So you don't have to manage or worry about server, right? Yeah. So, Yori, is this uh, clear to you? Okay. I'm offline. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm just uh, you are thinking, thinking. thinking pro process, yeah. So what that dummy is, uh, so at this stage, you you have done the assignment too, right? So you, you notice when you build our application, deploy application, you really have many different different ways to do it, right? Uh, so as what we have done in assignment two part one, uh, you have to manage Z2, uh, you have to configure, right? You have to think about what happened if large spikes flood of requests come to you, is this single EC2? Uh, can handle and then how to put water scaling. So all of the things you need to, to take into consideration. Alternatively, facing the same reality with a flood of requests, spike of requests come to us, we can just focus on writing the code like this, uh, like this, all right, using these building blocks. And then when it's a large number of user requests come to us, 10,000, this guy will be able to scale automatically. This guy will be able to respond and give you provision enough resources for your Lambda function to process a workload. Uh, also, DynamoDB allow you to do, um, do the scaling, right? Do the scaling. So you really don't have to manage the server. So that's the meaning of serverless, right? Yeah. So in the future, so you guys will think of, okay, so are you going to use the first approach, meaning you serve yourself? Sometimes maybe you should. Uh, in a, for certain workloads, certain application, you even think of use serverless approach. So yeah, so uh, you have different choices, different uh, tools for you to use, right, for you to use. Okay, so I come uh, to 
please. So this is the first question. Uh, actually, right. So in your own time, uh, please config, try the MCQ questions, uh, both in uh, secure coding as well as cloud computing. So uh, yesterday, uh, uh, yesterday, some from another class asked me, where is the MCQ for, for cloud computing? Right. So let me show you. For the cloud computing, For example, we talk about cash. So every lecture, right, they have a couple of resources over there. Um, then one of them is quiz. Okay, where is quiz? Mm -hmm. oh, this guy does not have quiz. Uh, Uriah, have you found the quiz uh, for cloud computing at the Blackboard? Uh, some of it has, some of it doesn't have. Uh, I checked zero and zero and one have. The rest don't have uh? Uh, and I'm still checking. Ooh. But, mm -hmm. Zero, one, two, three, there. Oh, very well. Uh, five heads. Okay. Like, yeah, just type it. Huh? Oh, so this is the thing. They 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 they, they put it like a, like this cloud quiz on some. You know, if, if some lecture uh, module does not have, they just leave it, right? Just leave it. Don't have. It. Then you can refer to some of the slides, right? And so on, so forth. Okay. So any uh, questions on your side? Before we uh, end the session for today, uh, I have one question for yeah. the authentication and authorization. Mm. Could you go back to the slide for authentication and authorization? Slides for I don't have slides uh, for like eighty one. Eighty one. Uh? Yes. Oh. oh this uh we are talking about cognito thing, is it? Yes. Mm, yeah. Um the identity pool represents the authorization, right? Mm. But the uh, temporary security credentials access refer to tokens, and usually the token is given when we are authenticating, right? Correct. Uh, no, after authentication, successful. Yeah, after authentication, successful. So, is uh, even the token considered authentication or authorization? Token is authentication. Okay. But this guy, uh, this security credentials, right? Uh, because how you authenticated, let's say you, you recall what we did in our own approach, right? 
after we authenticate it, that slash log in, right? You will generate a token. Inside the token, you can put uh, like a username, right? Right? And you can put a user rules, something inside the token. So later on, when the client send a request to the API, they will bring in this token and then they can do authorization uh, based on this token. They know the user, they know the role, they know something over here. So this is something happening over here. Yeah. Oh, first, I was thinking that the token mm. that should still be under authentication, but then yeah. using the token is under authorization. Yeah, so may you maybe just think of uh, uh, after authentication, this guy will kind of link to this part, right? Link to this part. They will get the to token. Yeah, so the, the yeah, so this part, mm, uh, uh, for exam purpose, uh, I, I haven't answered your question very well. Right, so that means I'm still not clear. So, so for exam purpose, you only need to know the Cognito will provide authentication and authorization service, right? And this tool is decoupled. That's the one. The second one is you have a choice to build the authentication authorization service, like what we did in our assignment ourselves. Alternatively, in your future project, uh, you may think of using some service provided by third party, right? One of the good example is uh, in, Sing in Singapore context, right? You have this uh, uh, IMA application, you have this uh, ministry CPF application, uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp. The, the last time they all implement their own authentication services, right? So now they they just use the uh, what to call SIMPAS services, right? SIMPAS services, uh, SIMPAS model factor authentication, right? Uh, so they plug that. So that's uh, basically the the scope for for uh, what scope for our exam. Yeah, that's all, right? Are you ready? So in the future, so uh, you, you, you when you have time, you can uh, like uh, continue with our assignment. Uh, 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 how to integrate with Cognito? You can continue to work on it. And then over there, uh, you, you probably are using this guy, right? And then uh, also you can try your. Your future application uses social media login uh, or web app identity. So what, after authentication done by uh, web app identity, uh, authorization is done by this identity pool. Uh, right? Yeah. So they have two features. Uh, Tanomi, you have to use both of them. So I, I yeah, kind of uh, yeah. So you can ex experiment more. Right? So for the exam, uh, we just uh, get a basic picture we'll do. Okay, don't worry. Yeah. The question is still there. Huh? Oh. Okay. Mm, yes. Mm, yeah. So question is still there. Let's explore uh, using community service and then to building to to for authentication, whatever, and then try a little bit uh, social media or federation uh, sort of thing. So we we, we do have. Uh, kind of uh, so this is more or less beyond the scope of, of the exam so I I just skip it right so skip it okay yeah so any other questions one more last question okay In this classroom, uh, because of the air car, I my I my I, I feel headache, dizzy. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and then last questions. Uh, is scheme and protocol the same thing? Ah, uh, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So you can check the HTTP uh, protocol, HTTP protocol. Uh, so for example, yeah, is scheme person. Yeah, they, they, they have some definition over there. They call scheme because uh, scheme uh, can be HTTP, can, can be HTTPS. All right. Uh, it can be FTP, can be Telnet. So there are many things over there. Yeah, uh, Yuri, can you see? Yes. Yeah, so this is called scheme. So scheme got uh, different values. Uh, can be HTTP, can be HTTPS, can be can be FTP, Telnet, can be email, uh, can be different stuff over here. This scheme. Yeah. So I think. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. All right, guys. Guys, any other questions? All right, so the In case you have more questions, uh, when you revise your stuff, can you put the questions in the team's chat uh, so I can come back to you? All right, so I want to show my face. Hey, Yuri, uh, Yuri. Yes. I want to show my face. Why, uh? mm. Why, Ms. G, today you want to show my show my face? <laughs> Why, uh? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Do you get new glasses? <laughs> no, <laughs> because uh, yeah, pro because I'm in the decision making process. I may have some uh, change, make some changes in my career path, right? Uh, so you are yet to, right? Yes. Now you're year two, yeah. So you will learn more in year three when you work on project and I work together with your team members and learn from each other, from lecturers. So there might be a possibility you may not be able to see me uh, when you uh, come to year three, right? So that's why I want to show my face. I, it's not because of my glass. I just I kind of I want to say thank you for your for. Uh, being fantastic, uh, fantastic students, and I'm very confident uh, based on the interaction with your guys. Uh, your guys are, are the, on the right track in terms of learning, in terms of problem solving, in terms of self-independent learning, in terms of emotional intelligence. Uh, when you do troubleshooting, uh, when you work on the problem, right? So. And I see the progress you are making. So I'm very confident uh, if you keep working this way and continue to improve ourselves one way or another. All right. So you are, have a, um, you are on the right track. And all the best to you and your family. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Funny Thank you. Okay. Yes. Great having you as our lecturer as well. Yeah, so it's, uh, I, 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 kind of, I'm, I quite enjoy this. And I, I'm, I'm happy to see the problem you're asking, the way you work, and the products you deliver. And then you really, we have very kind of constrained, limited resources on our side, right? And then the workload for this module is very, very heavy. Because you for DISM, they only take uh, for example, one module, one semester for secure coding. And we more, almost cover 70, 80% of the topics over there, right? Uh, so great. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, take care. Yeah, all the best to your guys. Okay, bye. Thank all right, you. thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you, Chair. Bye. <laughs> okay, take care. Okay.
Bye. Bye bye. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.